The forge was once the domain of the businessman, but we no longer forge because we have to. You can fabricate anything you need. We forge for the aesthetic of it, and with that, forging becomes the domain of the artist. By adding a power hammer to that process, your capabilities grow, the art becomes larger, and the process becomes more expensive. There is no point in laying the ideal of business and art side by side so that you may find any common ground, for the conflicts between the two are irreconcilable. This does not mean that they cannot coexist, but we must be ever diligent that one does not corrupt the other if both are to thrive. In the business of manufacturing any good, you must appeal to the market and meet their demand, charge as much as you can while staying competitive and without exceeding your value in the market, and then maximize your profits by by driving down the cost of the production of the good you are producing. In art, you are always growing and reinventing the processes that have been done before, keeping up with your peers, and keeping to the edge of what is in fashion and always improving. The manufacture of a good and the production of art are two different things, and yet they can be the same. But in order to do so, one must bend enough that the other does not break. There are volumes dedicated to this area, and that is why today we will only touch on the subject and how it relates to the fabricator and the forge, the businessman and the blacksmith. There are three topics here that we will cover in order to build a bridge between the two. 1. Training and hiring. 2. Prototyping. And 3. Estimating art. The most important tool in the forging process is the one that comes in every day at six and lights the forge. If that tool is you and you are also the owner of your business, then I pity you for this conflict is internal, but if not, then this is what we must do. The balance between an artist blacksmith and his employer must be fastidiously maintained. If you think that balance is easy, then chances are you have already failed. Hiring an artist is difficult. You must look for all the normal traits of a good employee, but an artist must have drive and passion to bring new life to their work, and these are often as much of a commodity to be offered to the market as the work that is being produced. It is true that with every product we sell and the imagery that goes with it, there is no stronger image in our trade than that of forging hot iron into beauty by a stoic smith. It is, however, a struggle to maintain efficiency and keep productivity high, while at the same time not crushing the drive and passion of the artist. It is, however, possible and sometimes practical to simply train a person to produce the same elements over and over. There are many hammers that only draw tapers, point bars, or cold texture material. But in order to truly grow your shop's capability and move on to top work that will be priceless to your customers, you must balance and grow a culture of artists, not just iron workers. This means you have to make the investment in training and prototyping. This cost may seem high at times, the idea of spending an hour or even a day working on trying something that may or may not work out to ever have a return can sound scary, but it is only through the development of an artist's culture in your forge that will make your work truly unique. Putting a price on priceless art is our next step. I will not dwell on this subject too long, but to say that at the end of the day, it is possible to bill for all those hours of prototyping and training. A few unique forged elements will add far more value than the time it takes to make them, but in the end you must charge for the time it took to build up to making them as well. At Oak Hill Iron we have five main power hammers on the floor, and they are used in varying degrees by every member of the staff. Everyone is encouraged to participate in the design process and share the directions they would like to experiment in. While it is not all fun and games, over time the unique perspectives, artistic views, and personal aesthetics find their way into the work. This does come at a high price. At any given time, 10% or more of our workload will involve prototyping and experimenting artistic training. But without that investment, we would be ill-equipped to handle the work we strive to produce in market. In closing, you cannot buy an artistic culture for your shop. Only with time and investment, as well as the right team and the right tools, of course, will it grow, and that will show positively in your work.